and in mercy? How about the relationship that you have with him through Christ Jesus? If you think your relationship with God is immovable, then you're not reading this text and many other texts. Now you can fool around and break fellowship. Look at that. You can stop acting like Mount Zion. <laughs> You can go over there and try to rebrand yourself. Well, I like acting like Mount Nebo. <laughs> Why didn't you make me like Mount Nebo, Lord? That's not God's plan and purpose for your life. And so, I can get this sense of confidence no matter what the elements are that are happening around me, no matter what the circumstances are that are floating all around in my life at any given moment in time, no matter how, how, how good, the, how high the highs are and how low the lows may be, the Lord is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the text wants us, the writer wants us to understand that we have, our faith doesn't hold on to that relationship. Our faith does not, does not, let me say this the right way. My faith does not manufacture that relationship. It does not. When, you, when you're a child of God, let me go back to something original. When you're a child of God in Christ Jesus, your, 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 your faith walk in Christ Jesus cannot, cannot change your identity. Mm -hmm. Once you're his, you're his. Yes. All right, about it? Amen. And you can't stop God loving you. Come on, Red. You didn't make him love you in the first place. <laughs> You were so lovely that God just had to love you. Amen. In case you think you are, let me help somebody. No, no, let me pull that camera back on me. You know, just in case for one fleeting moment I ever thought that I was so lovely that God had to love me, all I got to do is put the mirror up in front of me real quick on any bad given day and say, well, now you don't look too good now. There's something about you that I don't like. But the Lord just keeps on loving. His grace is just abounds towards us. He keeps on being merciful in spite of all the mess we keep tossing in. You know, we can get real I'm trying to get off this first point. You know, we can get real messy in our lives here. And we can convince ourselves that we just don't deserve God's love. The news is you don't deserve it. None of us do. He doesn't give it to us because we deserve it. Is it because he loves us? Yeah. Yeah. So the writer says, just like the, and as the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from this time forth and forever. In other words, he's building a he's got a hedge of protection around you. He not only loves you and his grace is abounding towards you, that there's his power, it is reflected in his power and his principles that, that are operating around and surrounding your life. In other words, there's only so far that God's love is going to let you go. I mean, if I understand the text right. So the text comes down in verse 3 and says, Now for the scepter of wickedness, I'm in the Amplified again. The scepter of wickedness, this is not terminology we like to use in the modern day vernacular. The scepter of wickedness shall not rest upon the land of the uncompromisingly righteous. I'm Amplified. Lest the righteous, that is God's people, Stretch forth their hands to iniquity and apostasy. My second life lesson is this. God assures the righteous believer. Sounds like a double saying, yeah? The righteous believer of his protection in and through our trials and our tragedies. God assures the righteous believer of his protection in and through our trials and our tragedies. His promise, his second promise in this particular passage is that he talks about the set of the wickedness, of, of wickedness shall not rest upon, shall not rest upon the land of the uncompromising and righteous. And that's, the, that's the righteous, that is God's people, be tempted or stretch forth their hands towards iniquity and apostasy. Now, he, let's, let's stop about what he's not saying here. First of all, the text is not saying that you won't be facing trials and tribulations and tragedies. Come on, Rev. Come on now. Even though we are not of the world, we are Christians in Christ Jesus, we are in the world. Come on, Rev. 
sin sick fallen world and we still have we still have enough of that old sin nature in us to be attracted to some of the mess that the world puts in front of us. Am I making some sense? And so the writer accounts for the reality of the fact that there will be issues. Y'all gonna have some issues. The question on the table is what do you do with your issues? When they pop up and get all in your face and try to muddle up your day-to-day -day living, you know, try to cloud your vision, try to get you all caught out in this area where God doesn't want you to be, get you worrying about stuff that God doesn't want you thinking or worrying about, get you fearful of things that God doesn't want you to What are you going to do with those issues that the world keeps put out in front of you that you have to handle on a day-to-day -day basis? Because he says, that the, he doesn't say, he says, the scepter shall not rest upon the land of the righteous. Doesn't mean he's not going to come to the land of the righteous. Scepter is going to come. The question is, is it going to rest? Is it going to habitate and abide? What do you do when you get your issues? How do you handle your business when it, when it tries to move you into a different direction? The Lord has given the promise that those that trust in him shall not be moved. Yeah, but Lord, when I get my issues, I feel like I'm being moved. Doesn't it feel like you're moving when you're dealing with your issues? <laughs> They're going to make me preach this thing, Jacob. <laughs> so how do, I, how, do I, how do I harmonize the reality of the situations that I'm dealing with, one you know, the particulars that I'm dealing with in my life journey, with the promises of God that I shall not be moved, my relationship with him shall not be moved. Again, the reality is, that these outside circumstances are going to come at you. That's life. As long as you breathe. Some of your issues are going to be nice. Some of your issues are going to be messy. The question on the table is, where do you turn as you start dealing with the things that are on your plate on a day-to-day -day basis? If you try to start mustering up your own human strength to handle this by yourself, thinking that somehow you've grown smart enough to be able to deal with all of your things all by yourself, and you don't need God in the midst of this formula, then you're going to have issues that are mounting on and on. They just keep on growing. They get messier and messier. Folks start coming in and adding mess to your issues because you don't know, feel like to add mess to your issues. You look like you got a whole plate full. I got something that you can handle over here. Let me give you a few of mine or muddy up some of yours. And, you know, you know. and the question on the table is, where are you going to let that scepter land? The Lord says it does not, for those who are not only in right relationship with God, and we take it to the New Testament through Christ Jesus, but in right fellowship with God, walking with the Lord, in obedience, then you know where to turn when things start getting ugly. And it says, when you turn, then you won't, then you'll find the strength that the Lord gives yeah. in the midst of whatever situations that you're facing. Come on, Red. So that it doesn't drag you further into the quicksand Come on, Red. of iniquity and apostasy. And your faith won't get all skewed up and your actions won't follow faulty faith. So I like that. That's a good promise. He said he assures that to us. In other words, just kind of, you got the relationship if you trust in Christ Jesus and you're related to the Father now. You're, you're one of his kids now. You're, you're, you're a child of God. You're, the Holy Spirit now dwells inside. And I'm going to the New Testament side of this piece here. You know, you've, got a, you've been sealed. You've got a new name in Christ Jesus. You know, you're walking. You've got an opportunity to walk in fellowship with him. If you start straying off the fellowship, you're going to have the world's going to give you what the world gives you. But you're still God's child. Yes. And you can always... You can always renew the fellowship, restore fellowship with the Father. And that and that end will be the way in which you are not, the text says, in which God's people will not stretch forth their hands toward iniquity or apostasy. You may, you may attempt to reach out to them. You may let me help someone. It may look good and you may want to reach. Well, I see that thing there. But he will give you the power not to stretch out your hand and rest it there. 
and seasons. 